Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about Salesforce Files Connect, uh, what it does, its use cases, the setup and the limitations. Let's start with the setup of Files Connect. Files Connect can be used with SharePoint, OneDrive, Google Drive, Box. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to use SharePoint. It works mostly the same with other providers as well. And we will have other videos to cover them. So to start the setup, Let's just first enable the Files Connect. For that, search for Files Connect in the setup menu of Salesforce. And from here, you can enable it. Leave everything as it is, except just enabling File Connect and hit Save. Once this is enabled, the next thing we are going to do is create a permission set for Files Connect. Click new to create a new permission set and name it anything you want. I would be calling it files connect permissions. For the license part, you can select as none if you don't want to tie it to a license or you can select a specific license if uh, that's how you need it. Once the permission set is created, we are going to assign it the files connect permission. For that, go to system permissions and click on edit. On this space, search for Files Connect Cloud and enable that permission. Hit save. Once this is done, we are going to assign this permission set to our users. In this case, I'm going to assign this to myself. For that, click on Manage Permissions and then add assignment. Select the users you want to assign the permission set to and click next and then click assign. The permission set is now assigned to me. The next thing we are going to do is create a authentication provider that would uh, connect the Salesforce with SharePoint. For that, search for auth in your setup menu and click on auth providers. Click a new auth provider. For SharePoint connection, we will select Open ID Connect. That's the recommended way to connect Salesforce with SharePoint and name it anything you want. I'm just going to call it SharePoint. For the consumer key, put any placeholder value. We will change them later. And then for the authorized endpoint URL, put this value. Now, I'm going to link this in the description, but the only thing that changes here for you is the value of SharePoint tenant. In my case, it's ZL, Z1 to ZB. And uh, you can find this value from your SharePoint URL. It's the very first part of the SharePoint URL. In your case, you just need to change this. I'm going to take this URL and going to put this for the authorized endpoint URL. The second input is token endpoint URL, which is same for everyone. So you just can put this value and I'm going to link this in the description again. And that's it, hit save. Once this is done, uh, make a note of the callback URL that Salesforce gives you. We are going to use that. So now the Salesforce side of setup is mostly done, but the other thing we want to do is register an app with SharePoint, which is going to handle our connection. For that, go to portal.azure.com. And here, just log in with your Microsoft account. Once in here, search for app registrations. And we are going to register a new application. So for that, click on new registration. And I'm going to just call it uh, Salesforce SharePoint. You can name it anything that you want. Leave everything as is and click on register. Next thing we want to do is uh, go to authentication and add a redirect URL. So for that, just click on authentication and then click on add a platform, select web. And for the redirect URL, we are going to copy the value that we got from the previous step under callback URL in Salesforce. Once this is added, we are going to create, uh, we are going to add our API permissions for the SharePoint app. 
so just click on api permission and click on add permission select sharepoint from this uh, new page and click on delegated permissions after that i'm going to select bunch of permissions you might select uh, you don't have to select all of them probably but i have had errors while when i don't select all of them so i'm going to select a lot of them here first thing we'll select is under all sites i'm going to give all sites dot full control then in enterprise resource i'm going to select enterprise resource dot write under my files i'm going to have my files dot write and under sites i'm going to have sites dot search all so these are the four things that i want to select and once that is done i am going to create a consumer secret that we needed in our setup where we had provided placeholders for that click on certificates and secrets and click on new client secret you can call it anything i'm going to name it salesforce and you can choose the duration uh, for which you want to keep this active i'm going to select maximum here which is two years once this is done copy the value of the secret from here and then let's go back to Salesforce and put it in there. So click on edit on your auth provider that you created. And we'll replace the value of consumer secret here with the real value. Go back to Azure portal again and click on the overview for our app registration and copy the application ID, which is also called the client ID. And then just put that under consumer key. And that's it. Save. This has set up our auth provider. The last thing we want to do is create an external source for Files Connect. So search for external so data sources in the setup menu and select external data sources. We are going to create a new external data source. I'm going to name it SharePoint. Again, you can name it anything you want. And for the type, we are going to select Files Connect Microsoft SharePoint Online. The next thing it asks us is the site URL, which is going to be our SharePoint site URL. I'm going to grab it from my SharePoint. The identity type that I'm going to select is named principal. You can also select per user, where each user will have to log in once to their SharePoint. And then we are going to select the authentication provider that we just created. In my case, it's called SharePoint. Make sure that this checkbox is checked, which says start authentication flow on save and hit save. This is going to now take us to Microsoft login page where you would want to log in with your Salesforce account, uh, with your SharePoint account. It's gonna ask for some permissions, allow all those permissions. So hit accept and once this is done it's going to bring you back to salesforce and that's it our setup is done the last thing we want to do here is click on validate and sync and that's gonna sync a couple of things from your sharepoint into salesforce this doesn't sync all of your sharepoint so this is not going to take a lot of time on the screen that opens, select item SharePoint or whatever the name it shows you and hit sync. Now when that is done, uh, we will now see Files Connect in action. So I'm going to go to account in my Salesforce and I already have the files uh, component under my related list. Click on add files. And you would see that under connected sources, there is a new data source, which is SharePoint, the name that we defined. Click on that and you're going to see everything from your SharePoint site in here. You can also search for things or you can browse through. I'm going to search for cloud files here. And I'll see all the documents. You can select as many documents as you want and you can simply then click add. And this is just going to add these files into the files component of my uh, related list. The files are still in SharePoint. It's not making a copy of them into Salesforce. So if you edit the files there, they're going to be ed edited here uh, in real time. 
And a simple way to identify files connected using Files Connect is that your data source name would be right next to them. You can click on these files and for most of the file types, you can see the preview right inside Salesforce. It did not load for PDF, it sometimes does, but that's a little bit of limitation. You can also click on this button and open these files in SharePoint Online and work with them. You can as well download the files from right here. You see that the file is uh, open in SharePoint and it will also be downloaded to my computer when I hit download. So that's it. You can save Salesforce stories using this, uh, using this feature. You can also connect your files from SharePoint into Salesforce, thus keeping all your files in one uh, central repository. So that's, that's about Files Connect. Now let's talk about some of the limitations that Files Connect has got. Uh, one thing is that when you upload files from Salesforce, you cannot directly upload into SharePoint. You can only upload them into Salesforce. So using Files Connect, you can only bring files inside Salesforce. You cannot upload files from Salesforce to SharePoint. Uh, the other small limitation is that you cannot uh, see the preview for all kinds of file types. It does work with PDFs most of the times and for Word documents as well, but sometimes it does not. And for some complex file types, it does not work. But that's all the limitation. And that's it. That's about Files Connect. If you have any questions with setup or any questions related to Files Connect functionality, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.